Good morning. All right. Uh, my first presentation is on uh, ergodic uh, standard deviation. This is basically a summary of um, the, the within event and between event standard deviations in the 14 candidate uh, ground motion models that the TI team is currently evaluating. Um, so you have the 5NGA West 1 models, 5NGA West 2 models, and the four uh, non-NGA models, Akareta, Bindieta, Grazer, and Kalkan, and Zao. So a lot of what uh, I'm going to uh, summarize has been discussed um, in the last couple of days, so this will be rather brief. Uh, we're starting with um, Abrahamson and Silva 2008. Okay, all my symbols are missing, but... Um, Okay, I'll, I'll just talk about it. <laughs> Do you have a pointer? Okay. So basically, the pointer. The pointer. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. So we have here uh, Abrahamson and Silva, 2008. They used the mixed uh, effects uh, approach to separate their uh, uh, within event and between event standard deviations. Um, uh, both uh, standard deviations are a function of uh, period, magnitude, uh, and they have included uh, the soil nonlinearity effects, and this would be, uh, the parameters for that are the S30 and the, the median PGA rock. Uh, their standard deviation, their within event standard deviation distinguished between uh, measured and estimated VS30. Uh, Bohr and Atkinson 2008 used two-stage regression uh, to estimate uh, their uh, standard deviations. Uh, both of uh, their standard deviation, the within event and between events, were function of uh, period only. Uh, their tau, or between event standard deviation, distinguished between uh, a specified versus unspecified style of faulting. Campbell and Bosonia 2008 used mixed effects algorithm. Their uh, between event standard deviation is only function of period. The within event standard deviation um, is a function of, um, includes soil nonlinearity. I think it, it has magnitude as well, right? You didn't? Okay. Okay. I'm getting confused. Uh, Chu and Young's 2008 uh, used <coughs> mixed effect algorithm. Um, their uh, tau or between event standard deviation uh, uh, changes with magnitude and uh, spectral period. The, the within event standard deviation phi uh, changes with magnitude, um, spectral period. It also distinguishes between aftershock and main shock, as well as inferred versus measured uh, VS30. And they included the effects of soil nonlinearity on both uh, phi and tau. Uh, Idris 2008 used one stage uh, regression algorithm, and they only provided total standard deviation. So they didn't uh, estimate the between event and the within event standard deviations. All these models obviously use NGA West 1 data. They, have, they are applicable for a range of periods from 0.01 to 10 seconds, including PGA and PGV. Uh, magnitude 5 to about 8, 8 to 8 and a half. Distance up to around 200 kilometers. Uh, VS 30 from around 180 to 1500 meters per second. Uh, now we're into the... Um, NGA West 2 models, the Abrahamson et al. again used mixed effects algorithm. Uh, they are now having uh, their within event and between event uh, standard deviations function of uh, spectral period, magnitude, and including the effects of soil nonlinearity. Uh, they, their uh, within event standard deviation distinguishes between uh, measured versus estimated VS30. Uh, one new feature is that they have their within event standard deviation for Japan only, and then they have it for the rest of the data. Uh, Bohr et al., uh, they used the uh, now mixed effects algorithm to estimate their within event and between event standard deviations. Their tau is a function of magnitude and spectral period, and their phi now is function of uh, magnitude, distance, and uh, VS30. 
Uh, Campbell and Bosonia used again mixed effects algorithm. Uh, both of their phi and tau are function of uh, period, magnitude, and include the effects of soil nonlinearity. Uh, Chu and Young uh, used mixed effects algorithm. Uh, they, their uh, within event and between event standard deviations are uh, similar to the 2008 ones in the sense that they are a uh, function of uh, spectral period magnitude and they include uh, a soil nonlinearity. Idris model again used the one stage uh, regression, so the, uh, he only provided the total standard deviation. One feature here with these new NGA models is they are uh, applicable for um, a range of magnitude from three to eight and a half. Uh, they apply up to distances of 300 to uh, 400 kilometers with the exception of Idris and uh, uh, a range of VS30 of about 180 to uh, 1500 meters per second. <coughs> now for the non-NGA models, we have uh, the Akare Tal model. They used the mixed effects algorithm uh, to estimate their between event and their within event uh, standard deviations. Uh, and they are both a function of standard uh, of spectral period. They're actually a constant for each uh, period. Their within event standard deviation is relatively large, and we'll see that in the coming plots, and it's probably due to the, their small magnitude data. Uh, the Bindi et al. model uh, used mixed effects algorithm uh, to estimate their phi and their tau, uh, which are a function of spectral period only. And again, their um, within event standard deviation phi is relatively large. The Grazer and Kalkan. We learned yesterday that they used uh, the mixed effects algorithm. Uh, for now, we only have their total standard deviation, but they're going to provide us uh, soon uh, with their between event and within event standard deviations. The Zao et al. Uh, <coughs> model used a mixed effects algorithm to estimate phi and tau, which are only function of spectral periods. Okay, so um, next I'm going to show comparison plots of phi, tau, and the total standard deviations for these four uh, general scenarios, strike slip magnitude 7, wrap 10 kilometers, uh, dip of 90 degrees, um, strike slip magnitude 8, wrap 200 kilometers, normal on the foot wall, magnitude 6.5, wrap 15 kilometers, and the reverse on the hanging wall, magnitude 6.5, and wrap uh, 5 kilometers. And these plots are provided to me by Nick, Nick Gregor. So this is the uh, strike slip magnitude 7 uh, scenario. On the left, you have the phi versus frequency. On the right, you have tau uh, versus frequency. And then on the bottom is the total standard deviation. And uh, some of the features, and again, this has been repeated over the last couple of days, is uh, Bindi, uh, Akar et al., and um, DAO have relatively okay. high uh, fee compared to the rest of the models. For TAU, we have uh, Bindi again showing a relatively high TAU values. Um, and this is here the, the total uh, standard deviation combining the two. Strike slip magnitude 8 distance 200 kilometers. Uh, we have here, uh, again, Bindi, Zhao, and uh, Akare Tal high. Now BSSA is uh, coming up high, and I think this is function of, because of the long, peer, uh, the long large distance. And you have a Tau here, and the total standard deviation at the bottom. Normal on the foot wall, magnitude six and a half. Again, same kind of observations uh, uh, for phi, tau, and the, the total signal. Reverse uh, magnitude six and a half. This is very similar kind of um, <coughs> standard deviations to the normal six and a half. And that's it. Any questions for Linda on this, on their gothic <laughs> sigmas? Oh, hold on, wait for a microphone. Good morning, this is Sinan Akar. Thank you, Linda, from METU. Uh, only a comment, actually, or some sort of clarification. Uh, I have been communicating with my colleagues, the co-authors of ASP 13, and we really want to dig into this large magnitude, in particular fee, so 
within a month or so, uh, we'll be providing you and as well as the scientific community uh, the reason why we have large fee uh, in terms of, most probably it is, going, it is the poorly recorded, if one, of, one of few poorly recorded earthquakes that <coughs> inflates the fee. Thank you. Thanks. Any other questions for Linda? This was the easy part on the segments, right? It's going to get go from here. No? Okay, let's move on to the next one. 